for God and my PS10583. And whereas the Edgecombe County Board of Equalization and Review, after the due notice as required by law, duly commenced in its meeting on April 3rd, 2023, and after taking and subscribing to the oath required by law, proceeded with the dispatch of its duties. And whereas the said Board of Equalization and Review has heard and given due consideration to all complaints and appeals that have come to its attention from the taxpayers who own or control taxable property assessed for taxation in Edgecombe County with respect to the valuation of such property or the property of others. And whereas the said board has examined and reviewed the tax list of each township for the current year, has listed and assessed all real property and personal property subject to taxation in the county, which had been omitted from its said list and brought to its attention, has corrected all errors brought to its attention in the names of the person subject to action to be taken on pending appeals to the board in its description of property. And in the assessment, and valuation for all taxable property appearing on said list, the said board has increased or decreased or left unchanged the appraised valuation. Now, therefore, it be resolved by Edgecombe County Board of Legal Session and Review that all changes in names, descriptions, or valuations made by said board shall be reflected upon the tax records of the county by correction, rebate, or additional charge, and that when all such changes have been given effect upon the tax records and the scrolls or tax books have been checked, totaled, and balanced, the same shall be, and the same are hereby declared to be the permanent tax list assessment role for Edgecombe County for the year 2023, subject to the provisions of Chapter 105 of the General Statutes of North Carolina, this first day of May, 2023. Uh, and the motion is to approve Yes, sir.
I'm, I'm open to going out and frying a chicken and flipping a hamburger. I don't know that my husband would tell you that, but I'm, I'm willing to try it. Um, so that's all I need. So. What is the address? It's, um, I think the address to the actual property is 103 Market Center Drive. It's the vacant piece of land on 64. There's no reason in the world that piece of land can't stay. It's highly visible from 64. Not a reason in the world. All the restaurants, everything's going across the street at the Walmart area. Lowe's store development has bought more land over there and they're going to continue to develop. But in the meantime, my piece of land is sitting there. I just need some help. I want to make Tarboro better. I want to give Tarboro what they need. There were 214 comments just about three or four weeks ago on the Tarboro 27886 page where they wanted restaurants and they wanted somewhere to sit down and eat. I'm not talking about just fast food. But we need to bring something in here to, to <coughs> help the people that can't drive Rocky Mountain. They can't drive to Greenville. They can't drive to Wilson. We need to have a restaurant that when somebody comes to Tarver, they can sit down and it needs to be a, not a mom and pop thing. I think mom and pop great or is great, but a lot of people want a national change. I can bring the national change, but I can't do it without cutting the trees. And I learned my lesson with cutting the trees one year. I went out there and cleaned all the trees on my side by myself, hauled them to the street. The uh, Division of Highways told me not to do that anymore because I had cut some of them and hung over on their side. So I don't want to do it myself. If they would let me, I would be glad to put my little suit on and go out there and do it. But I can't. So I'm just asking for the help behind it to really? see if we can try to make it open up so that businesses can be seen. Lowe's, Walmart. I'm not opposed to them getting any business, but I want to. If there is any assistance, please give it. That's the only thing that I think we can do in our process to say if it's a, if it's a transportation problem, transportation is their property. And uh, I don't know if it's the same thing we can, but I certainly would ask our staff to make the communication. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Good evening, Trimble Stancy, 127 Midway Lane, Tarboro, physical address, mailing address, P.O. Box 1391, Pine Top, North Carolina. First, I bring you a message from the people that's trying to hear the meeting and the people that's trying to see the meeting. They ask me to tell y'all to talk into the microphone. I tell them I can't care for them for what to do, but I have a really um, Also, um, I um, noticed you know, this is probably beyond you all, but um, just reading about where I was at, at the meeting last week, but learning about how much money uh, Rocky Mount um, City Manager is trying to pay the um, Rocky Mount Police. I know it has nothing to do with Edgecombe County. However, I thought it was kind of strange that a uh, local police department would make more money than the sheriff's office uh, when they cover the whole county. I, I just can't, I, I just can't get over that in my head, but I'm on neither 
one is county commission or the right about city council, so I have no control over. It. But I it do. I mean, to me, I just found a problem with that. And I know you probably can't match the sixty thousand, but I think you know um, y'all be able to do something to bring them up closer to that. Um, I was late to get here right now because I um, met about three rescue squads going towards top, uh, my way, so I turned around and went back. And I found out where they were, so I came back to this meeting because I had promised folks I was going to come and video you. But however, I can't hear you that clear in my, in my video also. So will you please just talk into the microphone? People want to hear you. I mean, you know, it is the business of the people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matt. Is there anybody that's just to anybody speak up out of this? And um, moving on to our business. Um, you have before you a set of budget amendments. You'll see the first uh, first few are those that require your approval. I'll uh, mention a couple things about those. You'll see budget amendment number one. This is for Department of Social Services. This is to move funds from uh, regular salaries to contract labor. Um, as you know, we've had a number of vacancies in the department, so we're using uh, some contract labor to fill in some of those gaps so we need to move some money to cover some of those bases. Uh, budget amendment number two is uh, you see real reallocating funds within Department of Social Services. You'll see this is between the two lines, State Foster Home and Title IV E Adoptive. This is no additional appropriation, just moving funds between those two lines. Uh, budget amendment number three, you've heard reported uh, in previous meetings that we had some major um, uh, water leaks in the county that our department uh, found. It'll find out doing that, but it has increased our costs in contractual services to be able to do some of those repairs. And so you'll see it's moving um, funds from other lines into contractual services. Budget amendment number four. Uh, connected to that previous budget amendment, we're moving some funds um, from postage and operating supplies into salaries overtime and utilities department. I do ask that you consider um, the addition of a budget amendment. There's a copy of it um, at your seat. It's labeled Budget Amendment 4A. Give me a moment to put your hands on that. <clears throat> so this is a budget amendment from, uh, from Sheriff Atkinson, and you'll see that he is requesting to move some funds from retirement, uh, salaries, and a few other lines uh, to move in a handful of lines where it looks that those lines will fall short before the end of the fiscal year. So moving funds into those lines to cover uh, what we expect to be shortfalls in those lines. In particular, I do want to draw your attention to, um, to the last three lines, which is capital outlay and salaries lines. In capital outlay, the sheriff is requesting to move uh, funds uh, into capital outlay to be able to purchase uh, two vehicles, I believe it is, as well as 15 body cameras. You know, you've heard uh, the sheriff's challenge he's been facing, trying to keep pace with the, the vehicles that he needs. We were able to purchase some, we're waiting for those to come with the borrowing that we did some months ago. Hope to be able to purchase some more next uh, fiscal year. Uh, but I do support moving funds from that salary line into capital outlay. Um, also, I do want to remind you, you'll remember we did a budget approach this year in order to be able to do the 4% cost of living um, in four of our largest departments, we did a, uh, a vacancy allowance. Knowing that we will have lap salary as we normally do, we were counting on that lap salary to be able to cover the cost. It was about a million dollars of 4% cost of living. So we put in a vacancy allowance, basically negative numbers in Sheriff's Office, uh, Health Department, DSS, and Emergency Services to tie up some of that, that uh, lap salary so that we could use it towards uh, doing cost of living. So Sheriff and I and his staff met and made sure that this still leaves that vacancy allowance and just does not exceed the vacancy allowance in his budget line. And he's also requesting funds to be moved to those salary lines. You'll see in the note above, I made a correction there. He is considering requesting a 
extraordinary pay. You all have approved an extraordinary pay policy some months ago, and so he'll be making that request. Um, we'll have to review that and determine if it meets the requirements of it, but we did want to go ahead and move funds into those lines enough to cover it in case that extraordinary pay is approved. So I know that's somewhat of a busy uh, budget amendment like going on there, but I want to give you an opportunity to ask any questions. Uh, the rest of the budget amendments are those that um, I approve and those that are approved within finance department and both sets are for your information only. So requesting that you approve budget amendments one through four eight. Any questions? I got questions on four eight. That's a that's a large budget amendment to get sprung on day <coughs> of um, with no real context of what's happening there beyond beyond the five minute conversation three-minute conversation that we've just had. Um, we're moving money out of salary into salary. Can we explain what's happening well, there? Well, Sheriff has three different salary lines. He has salary for, is, you'll see it in the system as Sheriff, and that is for deputies, office staff. So it has salary line for Sheriff, it has salary line for jail or detention, and then the third is um, Salary line for E911 communications, I believe it is. I believe that's the third one there. So those are you come up. So three three different salary lines. If you'll notice those first five numbers, like at the very top, 10, 40, 320, and then those two at the bottom are 10, 40, 310, and 10, 40, 312. So they're separate salary lines. Okay. So I'm saying I'm assuming 4320. Is for sheriffs? Is for the detention center or jail. For jail? Yes. And that's because he's because he's had right much vacancy there, he's he's got more lap salary available than the other two. So the current budget of that is a million dollars, and we're taking three hundred and twenty thousand dollars out of that budget. That means that we are accounting for thirty-two percent, thirty-three percent vacancy, thirty-two percent vacancy. We account for a 32% vacancy in our jail staffing. And make yourself a little clearer for me. Uh, yes. How many vacant, how many opens you have? In the yes, right now we have uh, frozen about 10, so we're, we're looking at about 25 to 30. 25 to 30 of how many staff total in the jail? In the um, we have 62 sworn deputy side, uh, I hate to misquote, on the jail side. Uh, so we're looking at probably about uh, a little over 50s on the jail side. That's a hard place to staff. So are we not trying to staff that? Like what, what that, I'm a, when we take money from a salary, we can't staff, we can't backfill salary. So when we take money from the budget to move it to different things, we can't backfill that budget at that point. I can answer your question. Your question was, are we not trying that's one of the toughest positions in America to staff. Um, I shared with Mr. Evans, um, I wanted to come show you guys a video. Um, two of my staff almost got killed last month. So to answer your question, that job should be getting paid $150,000 a year. Okay? And, and, and if you'll allow me to finish that, uh, Commissioner Thorne, um, I wanted to bring those two young ladies in here tonight so we can see their faces. One is 65 years old, one is 60. And these two young men attacked them like they were animals. So it's hard to recruit that job. That's a tough environment to stay in for 12 hours and 24 hours. And I have two recruiters uh, that stay on that job. It's one of my main recruiting jobs. Oh, and, uh, so I hope that answers your question. I wanted to show that video tonight, but it's a pending case. Uh, we're talking about salaries in here today, but we could have been talking about two funerals in here today. Those ladies show great resolve, and one of the things that really, really shocked me, Commissioner Thorne, they came back to work in three days. They were 65 years old. If they were 25 and 30 years old, they would have came back to work. But they mean so much, and it's going to count mean so much to them that they come to work each and every day to make sure they provide a service. So I thank God that I'm not talking about two funerals um, because we're dealing with a high gang environment. 
um, houses about 30 murderers in the Hinscom County Detention Facility. A lot from the city of Rocky Mountain. And these young men, they don't care. And that's what we're dealing with. So we're trying our darndest to fill these positions. But in the meantime, the people that are working in there, they're working overtime, they're working on their days off so we can staff. So I don't get the complaints from moms that's asking Sheriff Atkinson, why is he locked down so much? Because one, he's a murderer, and two, he attacked two old ladies. Can I ask yeah. a rebuttal to that? Is we're moving 32% of the budget away from that instead mm -hmm. of paying the people that are there doing the job. I totally agree. I totally agree. And I feel like we raised that. And I know, Mr. Evans, we're in conversation. So I totally agree with you. If we can help raise that pay, I'm totally, I'm totally agree with you. We make you get better staff for professional staff. So I totally agree with you. I, we're do working want, on. I do want to clarify that these are one time costs, like so capital outlay. And we would only, I would only recommend this at this stage of the fiscal year because we're close. We got, you know, we're entering into May now. We've got really two months and 10 days of salary left. So this is not the kind of move we'd make near the beginning or middle, because it'd be one time capital purchase. Even if we approve, if I approve the extraordinary pay, that's a one time pay bonus. That is not an addition to the salary. And as I understand what we be doing based on what the routes, because we would be putting, when we do the budget, we talk about another year. Right. That would be maybe some excess money that we would have there. We can do this. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. right. Um, and but it's good. It's good. when we look at these yeah. amendments, we're looking at a budget not based off the one million because we said that okay, well he was able to move three hundred and twenty-two thousand dollars out of it at the end of the year. So then when we're looking at a budget, we're looking at okay, well he really only needs seven hundred thousand dollars. The way that we budget is we budget as if every position will be filled in the year. That's just been the county's approach to that. This year we did a little bit different, as I mentioned a moment ago, knowing we have lap salary. We did we did tie some of that up in his department, his office, some other departments as well, knowing we have some some available salary. But we always budget for every approved position fully as if they'd be there July one and be there through June thirtieth. So this is the lap salary for position that my daughter is speaking. That's all right. And also part of that also, I just want to get up here and really talk about the shape and uh, about fleet. Um, I gave you guys a folder. Uh, it's really quick, 24% 24 of our current fleet has over 150,000 miles. 61% um, of our current fleet has over 100,000 miles. I've had vehicles break down at murder scenes and had to call a tow truck to come pick them up. And so it asked the question, Commissioner, to the move funding um, to try to help outgoing budget to try to get a few more vehicles is, is what I'm asking you guys for. 24 of our vehicles, over 150,000 miles, we got several that's pushing up close to 200,000 miles. Uh, when we replace vehicles in our fleet, we move these vehicles to core personnel and school resource hours. So we don't get rid of these vehicles. We just ship them down in our fleet. As of right now, we have about nine SU, brand SUVs that are in Hendersonville, uh, but uh, I only can afford two of them. I know come July 1, they're going to go sky high and other sheriffs and other police departments are going to pick them up. If you look on that second, uh, there's a second uh, price and list, uh, 2023 police and itself is $42,100. Um, so that outgoing funding that Commissioner Thorne is talking about, try to wish to purchase a couple of vehicles out of that outgoing salary, uh, out, outgoing budget amendment. Uh, one vehicle with an outfit, vehicle outfit and mobile radio is $65,284. Uh, you guys see what the cost of two is and see what the cost of three is. Upcoming fiscal year, the capital outlay, I'm going to get $125,000 um, for uh, vehicles. And you guys can plan to see that's only going to allow me to get one vehicle uh, come July 1. Um, as in the past, uh, just something to consider uh, moving to the new budget year. Best going thing right here is enterprise lease, leasing. Um, they are confirmed with Hertford County, Halifax, Shawan, Berkey, Columbus County, Caswell. You'll see the deal with Rocky Mountain Police Department, Mount Olive, the MRI, Burgos, Warsaw, Aberdeen, and Nashville. They're currently in talks with Nash County and Tarbell PD. Brought this up 2018, our fleet is in a tough shape. And what you want is for 
and you guys will see a picture that's behind it. What you want is to see how our depth is constantly moving around over 500 square feet of county. They do a good, great job at it. Uh, we don't want them breaking down. Uh, you guys see the red list at the back of the inventory list. That's an red stuff you guys look at once you get home. Um, so the outgoing budgeting, yes. Uh, I need those funds to make sure I have equipment and make sure I keep a couple of staff that's been working overtime with some of the worst people in America. So yes, that $300,000 is going to good great use uh, per equipment and extraordinary pay. So I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah, yes, sir. Go ahead. Repairs are not going to shoot. Sir? Repairs are not going down. Not going down. And repairs are killing us. Um, repairs are killing us. Um, if we did do the leasing, um, and if a vehicle <coughs> is continuing to have some of the same issues, they'll come back and get that vehicle. But repairs are really costing this. So, and myself and uh, county manager, we've been in talks about having a county maintenance person. That's that's something big that we talked about. Oil changes, tire rotations, things of that nature, save the county money. Uh, but those things we've been in talks about. Yeah, repairs, yeah, that costs us money. And of course, fuel is going up. So we got to look at, so a lot of the monies that were moved as well, we had to move money to cover the cost of fuel for the remainder of the year. So that money uh, is going to be well spent. Another question. It's it's more of just I wish I had time to to digest what was happening, and it's not me coming off of, of the work that you do or anything. But when you're presented with a four hundred and fourteen thousand dollar budget amendment at a meeting, you got three minutes to digest what's happening, and that's that's my job on this side of the table. That's my job. Um, that's what I'm elected to do. So you're elected. That? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, I, I, it's my due diligence to ask questions. Right. About it. And, 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 and I don't mind doing that. If you guys look at that uh, line item, just for example, 1043154999000, like miscellaneous, so you guys understand that. That $9,000 is going to go to, there was a baby that was dumped in uh, 1994. Yes, New system in place. Uh, uh, it cost $9,000. Responded to his question. Uh, that like he had a problem with it. He just responded to his question. But those are the kind of things that I'm doing. When you see that miscellaneous $9,000 is to find out who murdered this baby in 1994. So yes, I want to answer those questions so I can give you full disclosure. And then I don't, know, I don't understand why we're, uh, we're that was not presented to them before those this kind of meeting. I, I think you guys need to know. I just think we need to be diligent about moving that kind of money make sure that we're okay moving that kind of money. And I, I kind of get your explanation there. Um, and then I just want to voice my support that sure. I, I'm all about the I'm lease saying. program. Yes, sir. I think that that is the way that we need to go. Yes, sir. I've asked that we look at that. Yeah, I understand. Any other questions? Certainly understand and we try very best to get all budget amendments, big or small, to you in your agenda package. Sheriff did send that over uh, last week. He and I had some discussions about it, had some changes that needed to be made, and we were working on it even up to this morning. He and I and some of his staff were talking through that. I certainly understand if the board doesn't feel comfortable, you, you're welcome to table it if you want to, and you can take it up at your budget uh, work session or if you feel comfortable. I do recommend that you I, I think that would probably be the best process in terms of, of when we, in terms of the time of the some things, sometimes these things are time sensitive. And the time they come in, and the time we get them, the manager might not have the time to, but it is, we can make the determination here. Yeah, if I could say, Mr. Chairman, I do want you to please do keep in mind, particularly if 
for those vehicles. They're in very short supply. And I know the sheriff every day that goes by doesn't have an available as a chance that he, he has for losing those vehicles. Is there a motion to approve a budget amendment one through four? Eight? Mini grant program was created to offer grants of up to two thousand dollars each to community-based organizations that provide recreational facilities and/or activities. The re review committee met on April fourth to discuss and rank the fifteen proposals received. Each proposal was rated based on the project description, timeline, area served, number of individuals served, duration of the program, budget, and feasibility and the capacity of the organization. The committee recommends the 10 projects in the amounts listed in the attached document to receive funding. I will note that seven of the 10 uh, have been previously funded uh, through this program and three are new programs. I do agree with the committee and recommend that you approve the grant agreements for the 10 programs as presented and authorize me to execute agreements with each. I 
can't remember right offhand where they're located, but you'll see in the description that they serve seniors and veterans as well. Uh, in rural areas, they provide nutrition and physical movement um, and activities uh, for seniors and veterans. And I can follow up and find out where they are. I can't remember. Okay. 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 All in favor, let's come out of the vote. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, it is approved. Next on the agenda is regarding your map review officer. Um, general statute requires the board to designate by resolution staff who will serve as our mapping and land records review officer as well as alternate review officers. Presented for your consideration is the attached resolution to designate Mr. Ray Wilson, our GIS coordinator, as our review officer, and Teresa Lewis, Caitlin Hill, Katina Braswell, and Mr. Brian McIntyre as our alternate review officer. I recommend that you approve the resolution as presented. Motion. Motion. Second. Questions? All in favor, let me know by the vote. Sign aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, it is approved. Next, yes, sir. I do want to correct myself. The, uh, on the recreation mini grants, the, uh, the least of these is the one that's on Space Chapel Road. Okay. Um, next item is uh, regarding the National Day of Prayer. I want to thank Commissioner Harris for uh, bringing that back to our attention. You'll see that there is a, a resolution um, in your packet that I recommend that you consider to approve. Motion. So moved. Second. Question. All in favor, let me know by vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, it is approved. And just for the public's knowledge, if you weren't aware, uh, National Day of Prayer is this Thursday, May 4th. There will be um, a gathering here at town, uh, at town Square at 12 o'clock, I believe it is, Ms. Harris, this Thursday. Um, item G is uh, requesting that you surplus certain equipment the county has. You may recall, I think it was in 2008, that we received a grant that paid for about two-thirds of the cost of a natural gas vehicle fleet that we had. We had a ribbon cutting, these Honda Civics had the decals on it, um, and so it paid, it helped to pay for the cars as well as the refueling equipment. Um, we've had them on the road since 2008. Because they uh, are powered by compressed natural gas, it limits how far you can go with them because you can't fill them up everywhere. Um, but we've gotten good service out of them over the years. I will say that the refueling equipment, um, we've had to spend some money on that over the years. That hasn't lasted as long as we hoped that it would. But um, we believe that these vehicles are at their um, end of stage. In particular, the, the refueling equipment needs some work done. We recommend that we don't put that kind of money back in. So recommend that you surplus uh, these um, Five vehicles as well as the related uh, refueling equipment. So we can not get We're getting out of that. Yes, sir. That's not been so good. Is there a motion? Second. Second. Questions? All in favor, let me know by the vote sign aye. Aye. All opposed, here and done, it is approved. Item H is regarding our amendment to our pay plan. You recently approved adding a community paramedic position to our pay plan. This position was uh, will provide community-based health care with a focus on opioid overdoses. Opioid settlement funds will pay for this position and its related costs. Since advertising and interviewing candidates for the position, staff has recognized the need for two changes. First, staff recommends that the community paramedic position be moved to a grade 19 from 18. Considering the uniqueness of the work of this position and the skill level and experience needed for the program to be successful, a higher salary is needed to attract the right person. Secondly, considering that the additional funding we will receive from the second round of opioid settlements will enable us to hire more than one community paramedic in the future, we will need one to be in a supervisory role to better manage the effort in the field. Therefore, it's recommended to add a community paramedic supervisor position at grade 20. We have a copy of the proposed job description for that. I support the recommendation of our staff and ask that you approve the revised pay plan and community paramedic supervisor job description as presented. Motion. Second. Second. Motion. 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 Second. Mot
motion. Motion to approve. Second. We will receive it for 18 years. Okay, so yeah. 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 because my discussion today is something around the deed we possibly have to do. We've never done the project in the staff support our second one and not just concerned. Being that we're going to receive this funding for 18 years, so we feel like this is a good move for this program. Gotcha. But will it be the same amount for 18 years? It fluctuates slightly. Um, it averages around 150,000 a year. They give us the, the they give us how much we're going to receive for the 18 year period, at least for the first uh, settlement. Um, and it changes just a little bit. It never goes under 100,000. It averages around. You'll recall we received really the first two years really together. So you approved the budget amendment uh, a few months ago. So we used some of that money for upstart cost of a vehicle for this person, some equipment and what have you. Um, we have gotten word that the second round of settlement, which the first was with, was with the drug manufacturers. The second round is with uh, some pharmacies, large national pharmacies um, and we've been told that the second round of funding will be close not quite as much will be close to the same amount as we're receiving in the first round so you all approved a document a couple months ago that says basically we will participate in that so we expect in the next month or so to get some additional information on that. and if it, it appears to me it's a possibility that some of this could be very reduced yeah in, that anything insurance that's what it's Insurance will be involved, so I think both of these positions have a possibility of revenue reduced. That's right. In anything, any service that we provide that's insurance or Medicaid eligible will be filled. Any other questions? Yeah, Thank you. Chairman, we ask uh, that you um, recess as uh, board commissioners and convene as the governing board of Warren Stewart District 6. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Questions? All in favor, let me know by the vote side. Aye. Aye. All opposed? We are now uh, sitting at the board, the governing board of Warren District, Warren Stewart District number 6. Yes, sir. As you know, we have funds committed from USDA Rural Development to renovate and improve the sewer system in District 6, which is the town of Prince Bill. The project includes 2,619,000 of uh, revenue bonds, which must be approved by the Local Government Commission. Uh, it also includes 4,455,000 in grant. Um, uh, attached for your consideration is a resolution that requires Request the LGC to approve the issuance of debt through these revenue bonds. I recommend that you, as the governing body of Warriors Sewer District 6, approve the resolution as presented. Motion. So moved. Second. Second. Questions? All in favor, let me know by the vote side. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, the approved. Uh, I will let you know, Mr. Chairman, board, that uh, we were originally scheduled uh, expecting to go to the LGC tomorrow, but that's been pushed back to next month. Um, so there was a little miscommunication with our bond council as the information that they needed to submit. So we'll be going for the LGC at their uh, at their June meeting. Okay. Motion to adjourn as water school district six and the June meeting of the board commission.
Uh, we did look at a Rosenbauer custom top mount. Uh, we were not planning on purchasing a fire truck this early. We were looking at doing an order and building one, and the build time on them right now is about two years. So if we ordered one right now tonight, and someone was sitting in here that I can, once y'all say go ahead and order one, we'll, we'll order one. Um, but the price on that truck right there is going up over $100,000 if we order it tonight. Um, so the truck in question that the other department was building and has backed out on, we're going to save over $100,000. When, when, when did you make the statement on the truck? When did you order it or after you? Um, so we would we would pick it up. It's already so this particular truck was ordered by somebody else. They backed out on it, so it's kind of like a demo truck. Um, it's kind of like going to the car lot, and they don't have your car that you want, but they got a demo that you drive. Um, so this is kind of the, the same situation. Um, we did stake out a flooring pumper. Um, we talked to several manufacturers, and all of their prices are coming in at that 660 mark. Uh, the package that was left on your uh, desk in front of you, you should have a single page on the very back of that package. Uh, this is the price that he quoted us today. We got this price today, so we couldn't send it out earlier. Um, but the price, including the white tower, set out exactly like this truck is right now, would be $627,000 if we ordered it right now. So we're getting a considerable savings over $100,000 on this particular tire set. The, uh, you're probably going with what you can do with a half million dollar fire truck right now because we really won't plan on losing this fast, right? So phase one, we'll go ahead and start with part-time employment, part-time firefighters. Staff it from eight to five, Monday through Friday, uh, and they'll kind of go out and answer calls as needed. Uh, so any fires that we have to have them have in the day, they would go to get with this particular apparatus to be able to help out. Uh, Edgecombe County, we do have a shortfall of volunteers during the daytime. Everybody works during the daytime, which is a good thing. They have to volunteer fire departments because we don't have anybody going to fires like we did 20, 30 years ago. Um, so this apparatus will actually help with that, and it will actually put a full class A pumper, as we call it, our engine, <coughs> on a fire scene. So if one of the volunteer departments happens to be a little slow getting out, this one will be there. Where would it be housed? Uh, at our current EOC location. Put it there. So we've got a place to put it. We'll look at part-time personnel over the next couple of months if we get this one in place. Um, it'll stay with, still take a few months to get every all the equipment on it, but uh, probably in the next three, four months we'll be looking at doing part-time staff. Um, phase two would be doing full-time 24-hour staff, and then uh, they would start covering the Kingsbury area on. 24 hour basis, and then phase three, whenever we get a building built and are moving forward with that, we don't have time frames on this, but it's kind of dependent upon how fast things are moving at Kingsburg. So the, the phase three, we're having a full building built out there and staffing it for 24 7. Again, I have what happens to the part that you fire department that's already there. So if you remember the presentation I did at the uh, last year, uh, we're planning on leaving the Part C Fire Department in place. Uh, when the county finally does take over the Phase 3, uh, we would cover just the 4.5 square miles, or 4.05 square miles of the industrial park. And then they would cover the district that they currently have. And then the two would have to support each other. So it's change whatever. <laughs> saving money on this truck, are we able to spend that money on other equipment? Well, um, Mr. Crosby back there would love me to, you know, say, let's go ahead and order another truck right now, but we do want to wait and look around at some options. Um, I'm not saying he's not going to be the best price, but we just got this price, so we would like to look around a little bit before we uh, say something on the, on the, the second. We would yeah. like to go ahead and get that grant. Up and ended the, when we submitted that grant, we could spend it on whatever equipment well, we specified two trucks, and of course we were estimating two trucks and some other equipment to turn out the ESP and some other things. And of course that was all going to depend on cost. And that has to be sent by 2024? Thank you. And 
you're right behind your question earlier, if you approve this uh, tonight, there's a, uh, a sales agreement that we will sign. We will send that down, hold it. We will pay for it once it's actually delivered. All of you are saying? Yes, all of them. When it's delivered. So it's under contract? It will be if you approve it. No we have that from the no state money. grant. We have that from the grant in our fund balance now. The state is helping us with paying for the people. We, we will have that contract as soon as we get this motion. He's waiting on us to see whether we're going to accept it or reject it. So, so the recommendation is to approve the two contracts, change order, and uh, Two contracts, including the purchase of the fire truck. That be one motion. Yes. Sir. I have one question one about the question. audit contract. That's our full audit contract. At one point, we had two audit contracts coming, but we're we are just eighty four thousand dollars on the audit that we cash. Right. As we had sort of overlapping audits going at one time. This is for FY twenty three. The entire contract contract for the audit is eighty four thousand. I, I, I do make one dollar please. I did. They got a, they got a balance there. They got a balance there that's not being used, okay? So we just can't build them. Yeah. Right. Uh, did, I, did, I, did I get a motion? Did I get a second? I'll second. Okay, exactly. We got a motion and second. Question, get them up right. All in favor, let me know about the vote. Aye. Aye. All opposed. So let's see, here's approved. At this time, it's a uh, Motion to where am I? On the uh, just move to the department report. I'm on the contract today. Um, department report. Uh, you've got these reports in your agenda package. Uh, anything to be brought to our attention and analysis? I did add an updated sales tax report um, there at your at your seat. Um, I do want to, to call your attention to um, our Office on Aging, our ARPA funded program, I should say ARPA enabled funded program. Um, so you'll recall that of our ARPA funds, which we took the uh, standard um, allotment for revenue replacement, so all of this has become county general fund money. We designated $25,000 of that to be used through um, our Office on Aging. And so they have some activities. One of those is you'll see um, we're planning to provide very similar to our recreation mini grant, mini grants to uh, nonprofits and agencies who provide services for senior citizens. Um, these agencies, some are small, some you know, well established, well known. Um, they are critical for us and our arm to reach out and help serve our citizens. So we will. Um, open and request um, proposals from these agencies for these um, small grants up to $1,500. Um, it could be you know, anything related to the service that they provide except for no salaries or stipends for staff. Uh, I think this is, you know, these would be small investments, but I think it go a long way in helping us build our partnership and relationship with these agencies to help us to serve um, our senior population. So just wanted you to be uh, aware of that. Now, can an organization that receives one of these recreation mini grants still apply for this grant? They could, as long as it's not for the same. Okay. Good question. Any other questions in reference to the problem report? There are none. First, Mr. Chairman, to the board, I'm very happy to introduce to you tonight the county's, I must say, first chief financial officer. I'd like to invite Ms. Linda Barfield to come to the podium. Um, she went through a very rigorous process. You know that we used a, uh, a recruiting firm. Um, they took her and the other candidates to the paces, and she came through with flying colors. Today is her first day, and, um, and we're very excited to have her. I just want to introduce her formally to you. And, Give her the opportunity to make a few comments. Well, I can come first. 
Um, first, I want to say thank you. It's an honor to be standing before you all tonight. I'm really excited about the opportunity to return back to Exxon County and serve in this capacity and to serve under Eric's leadership. It's a really exciting time with Eric is rolling out a new vision statement. So I'm looking forward to doing my part in earning our citizens' trust through um, upholding our public funds through transparency and with integrity. So it's nice to meet you all. Well, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, and um, as you know, we, as a mission, I think the Jefferson is leaving us in good shape. She's leaving that director, okay, she's still serving, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, but uh, uh, I would say, say uh, uh, you know, if there's anything that you, if we've got issues, we want to know, okay, and we want to know how to correct those issues, uh, we want to stay on top of our finances. Uh, so make those requests and so that Ms. Evans can, so that we can help you do your job, okay? Okay. Uh, I think we are, we are ready for that and, and it will be very well received. And we want to help you return home. You, you're here. We want to help you stay. Okay. All right. Thank you and understood. Thank you. Pick up Brian. Go ahead. I do want to let you know that uh, this, you call her name, Ms. Ms. Edmondson, has just been a, a godsend for us and she's done a fantastic job. She pressed calls on her retirement to come and work with us, and we're grateful for that. Um, she retired in, in December, I think, and came work in, in January. We gave her zero break, um, but uh, she's been wonderful, and she uh, she will continue to work with us um, uh, alongside uh, Linda through the rest of the fiscal year, um, helping with the transition. Then beyond that, she has she's let us know that she's available to come back and assist. Um, as much as we need. So we certainly appreciate it. Um, just, um, we've got lots of meetings still ahead of us, so just bringing back this list of upcoming meetings ahead of you. We have been able to check three of them off at least, but we have a few more meetings, the next of which will be uh, Budget Committee's first meeting uh, this Thursday. Um, at 4 p.m. we'll meet in conference room 260. We have TDA financial report, a monthly report we're sharing with you. Um, update on state funding for bar broadband as I informed the board. Um, previously we had uh, Cloudwise uh, had got a notification they received the, the state funding, great rent funding for Edgecombe County. Uh, they had to be some changes and corrections in their application, and the applications were re-ranked. And so they now do not have the winning uh, grant proposal for Edgecombe County. Uh, now it is, um, it is uh, Bright Speed or Connect Holding to LLC doing business as Bright Speed, receiving $4 million from the state for broadband uh, deployment. They had my uh, first great meeting with them, some of their team members um, earlier today to talk about getting this project up and running. I did let them know that this is a project that's very, very important to you all. you are very interested to know how this is gonna go before it starts. So I would recommend that you consider us scheduling a work session. I know you've got plenty of meetings already, but I would recommend that we schedule a work session dedicated to just this so that you can hear directly from them. You can see the, the planned scope of the project um, uh, that, that has been funded. I do want to make a note here in your agenda pack, you'll see the page that has uh, the map connected to it. Now, when they submitted their application, uh, current providers had the opportunity to protest as is part of the process. So, originally, they're planning to serve over 4,000 households in the project due to the protest that has been reduced just under 2,900 households. But that's only with what's going to be funded with the great grant. They plan to invest their own funds to reach um, many more homes than that. And they'll share the details uh, with you when we have that work session. So 
Mr. Chairman, if you want you and I after the meeting to look at some potential dates, we can float that by the full board and, and pick a date that works for us. Well, Blocking off, say from 10 to 2. We normally do the budget work session until about 12. And I'm, I'm saying all 10 to 3. 10 to 3. Okay. And I'm just some of the work. So we it will be for the budget work to end. And that would be an agenda item also. Yes, sir. So next is, as you know, uh, we doing some work. We've been involved in that and uh, creating a vision statement for the county. You see uh, in your agenda packet what we're referring to as our two-sided vision uh, statements, uh, vision, our vision for the county from our residents' perspective, and also the vision for our organization, our internal vision, how we can be the organization that we need to be so that our county can be the county that we know that it can be. So just want to share with you the final version of that. Um, I did, uh, as I had mentioned at our meeting last week, joint meeting with the school board, I held a meeting uh, last week on the 26th of Wednesday, invited, uh, I sent an invitation to all of you, um, invited stakeholders. We had 30 people to participate. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Harris for attending. Um, have a really good feedback. You've heard this say our call to action is get off the list. So we we've we've been, took some time to look through some of those lists and talk in detail about some of those lists where we need to focus. So um, we uh, through that work, we've, um, we're looking at really three categories and that being youth and family, um, workforce, health, and um, uh, but looking at uh, four focus areas, we also started to identify agencies that are already doing good work in any of those areas. Because we don't want to create the wheel. If somebody's doing that work, we don't want to support them. We want to be a part of that. Help them to expand um, the work that they're doing. But also to look at where there are some gaps. So this is going to be long-term work, and you will keep hearing about this from me and from our staff and from our partners, but we're off to a good start on that. And I'll certainly I'll be keeping you posted on the work that we're doing. Um, and as we just talked about budget work session, I do ask for you to call a special meeting on May 17th to, um, to discuss the FY24 budget and now also the Great Grant um, Award. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. They are moving along with that. They've been doing a lot of work on that. Uh, I was told by the North Carolina Assistant County Commissioners that to make sure we utilize all of those new NDA students that they've been able to acquire, should be anything in any area that the county can help. If we pay dues, that we have access to them, so let's at least make sure we take advantage of them. Uh, now, as the chair of the risk management of the North Carolina Association, I've been encouraged 
all these apartment heads to take advantage of all these classes that are offered through risk management. Uh, you know, they give us a report and it looks like we signed up but we've not taken advantage of the classes that are available to us. So once again, I say, no need to pay those dues. give a call to Mr. Matthews about a water tap situation. I guess it's a new subdivision of Johnson Farms. Um, that, is there a reason it's taking so long we don't have help or it's just workload or, or what it is? But like I said, yeah, my folks stop you at church and ask you about something like, I'm not in the water department, but I'll call somebody. Time, ladies and gentlemen, we schedule for a closed session to discuss economic development. Is that it? Is that economic development? Yes. Can I get a motion for a closed session for economic development? Second. Questions? All in favor, let me know by vote. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. At this time, we will go into a closed session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Recording stopped. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs>